Welcome to Catamaran Life. Nick, how you feel about boat life? When you get a new boat, you think it's all going to be super easy. That has not been the case at all. Sometimes living on a boat is just so frustrating. It's not going to be a good one. Reset. It's going to be okay. Good morning, everyone. Nick and Jason are in our dinghy. They're flying their drone, doing some filming for their episode. That episode probably came out a few weeks ago now, so uh, yeah, go give it a watch if you're interested. We are in Koh Tao still. I will spin around and show you the beautiful beach that we're anchored in front of. When I thought about sailing in Thailand, this is kind of the picture I had in my head, so I'm a very happy girl right now. It's been lovely, lovely few days with our friends. And today we are sailing to Koh Samui because unfortunately Nikki and Jason have not moved on board permanently, although we tried to convince them to stay forever. But uh, they need to go, they need to go to China and see their new catamaran, their HH44. We're going to get the sails up and we're going to see what kind of performance we can get out of this baby. I've been to Koh Samui before, I really loved it and uh, I'm looking forward to going back, although I'm not looking forward to saying goodbye to Nikki and Jason because they have been so much fun, they've been incredibly helpful. We've really benefited from their experience and their expertise. Um, so yeah, we'll be sorry to see them leave. Plus they've done all our dishes and they've cooked for us, um, which has been really nice. But nonetheless, all good things must come to an end. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we'd love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Before we leave for Koh Samui, we have one last thing to do. And so we kind of need to tell you about our woes with our screecher. So three days earlier, we had a problem. We furled the screecher, unfurled it, but then when we furled it again, we got the lazy sheet caught in the furler which meant that it jammed, which means we couldn't unfurl it or furl it. And that was a problem because we had a big loop in this very beautiful and expensive sail. So between the four of us, we dropped everything onto the deck, packed it away. And that brings us to this morning. Now, between the four of us, we have this sail, as you can see. It's not well furled. It's like a big dog's dinner. So we un packed it from the locker being very careful not to catch anything and then the four of us kind of turned it back into the sausage roll that it's meant to look like by kind of traipsing it all over the deck this is not actually an easy thing to do once we had it all kind of furled up what we did was we tried to raise it again and the plan was that we were simply going to just go for a little sail unfurl it and furl it back nice and tightly the problem was though that we also found that we had a an issue with the halyard. It's a two to one purchase system and no matter how much we tried, it was so, so twisted that every time we tried to raise the, raise the screecher, it just turned itself into knots. So after a couple of three hours, well, we just cracked the shits, put it all back and said that we'd sort it out in Pattaya. There's more to follow on this story, but for now, just call this one a fail. Nick, how you feel about boat life? Yeah, I'm not enjoying it today. Yeah, we gave up on the whole trying to raise the screecher thing. The halyard is just way too twisted and we can't, you know, all four of us trying to work it out. Um, couldn't get it sorted. So we've put that in the too hard basket. So now we're going to go to Koh Samui. I don't know, try and have a, like, hopefully things will start going up. It, it's very, this is not somewhere that I need to, I can't fit them in there. Now I'm starting to remember what boat life is all about. It's about fixing things in exotic places and never has that been more true than the last couple of days. But, but Teresa, you've got yeah. a brand new li boat. Life is gonna be so boring. You won't be fixing things anymore. Absolutely. This the channel's just gonna be boring now. I know, we'll be so bored. Like we'll have nothing to do. We'll just be twiddling our thumbs, drinking champagne, making cocktails, sailing from beautiful location to beautiful right. location. With absolutely no boat problems because no. it's a brand new boat. Absolutely. Yeah. No, now, yeah. I, now I remember what it's like to live on a boat. Yeah, basically it's the brochure is bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> the brochure is bullshit. That needs to be out here like tagline. <laughs> it's just frustrating. Sometimes living on a boat is just so frustrating. You're trying to do a job, you thought it would take 10 minutes. We're now like on hour two. I don't even know whether I'm putting these things in the right locker. I don't even know where anything lives. <laughs> and um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't live in there. Oh, now we can't fly our screecher, which is a great, I mean, it's too, the winds are too strong today anyway, thankfully. 
but it's like such a great sale we haven't even had a chance to fly it yet and now we're not going to be able to fly it for ages and it's like yeah. anyway not complaining get back to work yeah again fairly sure i'm bugging up the wrong tree with this locker i have a feeling that is where they were last time i can't open my lockers without the strip driver everything's too new everything's too new and tight okay that's better nikki why don't you say anything <laughs> I just say, yeah, looking forward to this episode. <laughs> you won't be watching this, you'll be like, I don't need to relive that. <sighs> Lord, it's gonna be a good one. Here, yeah, baby, we're sailing. Oh, this is better. I mean, it's windy, but good. There's Kotal, we've just left Kotal. Nick and Jason are doing the dishes for some reason. Don't know, they're just, that's just the type of people they are. <laughs> and we are absolutely belting along. Well, after a pretty uh, stressful morning where four people that have probably got 50,000 nautical miles under their belt couldn't work out what the hell was on with our uh, halyard, eventually we cracked the shits and just said, packed it into this bag, let the uh, rigger sort that out when we get back to uh, and somewhere else. And yeah, we set up. We've got good sailing today. We have 20 knots apparent over the deck. We are hitting 9.7, 9.8 knots um, with one reef in. So yeah, it's nice to see the boat. Uh, the apparent is 65, which the boat is happy with. Yeah, we're just belting along. We should be hopefully uh, anchored inside four or five hours. And then that's it. I'm not doing anything else for a month. See, it's bouncy today again. But when you're only doing 30 miles, it's actually quite fun. <laughs> when you're doing 100 miles, it's a lot less fun. Are you choosing now to do the dishes, Nikki? Why not? Welcome to Catamaran Life. <laughs> the things you can do while underway. This is what we need to get used to. We're like, we're sailing, we can't possibly do anything else. Okay. It's so true. Right before we left, Teresa's like, no, wait, I, I need to make sandwiches before we get underway. And I was like, Teresa, it's going to be okay. <laughs> be able to make the sandwiches while we're underway. You're just not used to it yet. I can see no rocks. There's a light signal there, so as long as we sail through the hair, we should be fine. So if you just have a little look around. Yeah. So yeah, so I think we'll sail between these two islands. Yeah. And I can literally eyeball them anyway. Yeah. Oh, this is so much better. A few hours ago, we were all like tangled up on the foredeck trying to work that screecher out and sort the halyard out and we we're all getting pretty hot and flustered and frustrated. After the drama of this morning, it's so nice to be out on the water. Nikki and Jason are doing a little bit of filming, I think. They're just having a little chat and plan. And we are just, I don't know, I'm just kind of decompressing. I think that this morning was one of those like typical cruiser mornings, which I think any cruiser will be familiar with. Where, yeah, you just thought a job would take you five, 10 minutes and uh, just one thing went wrong after the other. And then it was like, oh, okay, this is our entire morning and it's gonna turn into quite a big job. So it's really, nice just to leave that behind and get out on the water and now we are reminded what cruising is all about i think that when you get a new boat you think it's all going to be super easy because the boat is just going to be like brand new and it's not going to have any issues and you're not going to have any issues but that has not been the case at all we've had to work some teething issues out we've had to obviously work out some issues that were totally self-inflicted like the screecher this, on the other hand, is putting all those good vibes back into our battery bank and we're very happy. Uh, it was all going so well. As we approached Koh Samui, we were absolutely thrilled at the prospect of dropping the anchor and just relaxing for a few days. However, Mother Nature had just one more thing to throw at us and that was a squall. We decided to drop the main early just in case. Jason jumped up on the coach roof and packed it away for us. We could see it coming on the horizon. It was getting darker, it was getting closer, but we hoped that we would get into the anchorage before it hit. 
Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. We had 30 knots with them. Huh? We had 30 knots and I didn't realise. Well, it's because you can't tell because, like, we're on a catamaran now. <laughs> Good call, hold the sail down. Yeah, they're heading into the anchorage now. And obviously we've got a squall that's like just chosen to appear at the wrong moment. So we're heading in, we have very poor visibility and we've got about between 30 and 35 knots, um, quite heavy rain and Nick and, oh, I'm getting wet even here. Wow. And Nick and um, Jason have to go forward and sort out the anchor bridle still. We didn't, it's like twisted up with the chain a little bit. So we're gonna head in now and there's gonna be very poor, like we're not gonna be able to hear what we're saying to each other. So we're gonna be relying purely on hand signals um, because there's no way that we'd be able to hear each other. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. Jesus. Wow, <laughs> there was a lot going on there for a minute. We're at anchor, it's still raining. I will just show you. Nick and Jason came forward and anchored for us. I was on the helm. Nikki was our relay person. And uh, here we are. We thought, because it was still raining a lot and the visibility was quite poor, we thought this um, boat here was at anchor, but it turns out now we can see they're on a mooring buoy. So that's less than ideal. They're still quite a fair way away. I think we're okay, but um, would have been better not to be anchored next to someone on a mooring ball. We'll be here for a few days. Hopefully the rain will go away at some point and uh, the sun will come out. But I reckon um, oh, we all deserve a pat on the back and a bit of a relax. Can our friends come sailing with us. I know, it's really, yeah. Uh... And then we've got this ball to deal with. Yeah. This boss. <laughs> it's not like you get to request weather though. Yeah. We thought we knew what we were in for coming in for, you know, we were like, we're going to go see this handover process and like, and what it's like taking, you know, first few days and shaking it out. And then now we're kind of like, maybe ignorance was bliss and we didn't need to know. <laughs> Oh, you've got this all Absolutely. Up. You've got like a four day passage as your shakedown cruise, so. I know, that's why I'm like, maybe we didn't need to know all of this. <laughs> because now I feel like I'm not even quite sure how to prepare myself for like what lies ahead. Buy everything. Buy, Buy everything. I, yeah. Oh, my shopping list just got so much bigger and. Yeah, yeah. I feel overwhelmed right now for what's ahead of me, so I can't imagine how you must feel right now. Do you know what? I feel good because like we're in the thick of it and we're like writing a list of all of the little things that we need to repair or replace or don't work or whatever. We've got a long list of things that aren't, you know, that would need tweaking and it's all good because we're going back to Pattaya anyway and we're going to get everything sorted out. So this is like a really good shakedown cruise for us because it gives us like enough um, like experience to really properly shake the boat down. We've done like two 100 mile sails. We'll do another 200 mile sail back to Pattaya. We're doing all the things, we're anchoring, we're picking up mooring boys, we're living on this boat. And so I'm, I'm actually feeling great about it because it's just about writing this list and saying, these are the things that we need to sort out. We'll give that list to sea wind. <laughs> Be like, here you go. And uh, they'll sort it out for us. So happy days. I'm fine. You guys, I'm not sure. <laughs> You're going to the Philippines. Uh, no, it'll be great. It'll be fine. We have a small problem. So our uh, water maker, it's uh, acting up on us, but it's not putting it into the tank. This has been quite the learning curve for me. Baptism of fire. Oh, hey, shit. Oh, this boat is stressing me out. I'm fully quite the shits with this thing. Salt water, which is a problem. The craziest thing of my entire life. 
what just happened. Sailing can bite you in the ass yeah. very, very, very quickly. Moments like this, I just think, oh my God, how good is this? That is so much better. Why didn't we do that to begin with? <laughs>